Well, we really know very little. We know that it increases the risk of developing Alzheimer's, but we don't know why. There are different things that could be happening and it has not been um, definitely uh, assessed yet. Um, it could be that there's um, an underlying inflammatory process that stays from the time uh, that TBI happened until um, later in life. Um, it could have to do with tau phosphorylation. It could have to do with oxidative damage. We really need to understand what is it that happens when you have TBI earlier in life that lingers <laughs> decades later to increase your risk of Alzheimer's. And also what, what does increased risk mean? Is it causing Alzheimer's or like we are hypothesizing based on the work that we did, is it just accelerating the onset of the pathology or exacerbating it uh, in people who are already predisposed to Alzheimer's disease? Those are questions that have not been answered yet. We are hoping to, um, to start dissecting some of those mechanisms that I was talking about. Um, to see you know, what are the factors that are present early on after TBI and that linger over time that might be affecting um, Alzheimer's pathophysiology. And we're gonna study this using the RAD model because that allows us to perform um, genetic manipulations uh, taking these factors in and out. And then once we have a more clear picture in the, in the RAD model, then we're gonna do some testing of these uh, mechanisms, these mechanisms we're hypothesizing in the retinal organoid model. Of course, retinal organoids cannot be a model of traumatic brain injury because it's, you know, it's an in vitro system. So you're not inducing trauma there. But, um, but if we can identify specific um, pathophysiological mechanisms induced by TBI that linger and that accelerate Alzheimer's uh, pathophysiology later in life, we can introduce these changes into the retinal organoids and see how that affects the Alzheimer's phenotype in this system.